Hey there, sweet friend. Are you feeling overwhelmed or stressed out by all that you need to do? Dinner being made, what needs to be cleaned, laundry piles piling up, doing what laundry does, or maybe you're just struggling with the thoughts that you're having or your mindset, and you're looking for some tips in how to bust through that mom life overwhelm and be able to not be stressed out and overwhelmed, but be able to do what needs to get done with joy. I got three tips for you, and you're going to love these, but before I do, I'm going to go ahead and let you know we're cleaning my bathroom because as a mom of seven, I need to multitask. So I'm going to be telling you these tips while I also go ahead and clean my bathroom that has been neglected for quite some time. We're not going to talk about that in this video, but let's go ahead and get into the first tip. My first tip is going to be prioritizing self-care, and I don't mean in the vain sense of like skincare and long baths. It's essential for moms to prioritize self-care so that you can recharge and maintain your well-being. This can include anything from activities that bring you joy and relaxation, such as exercise, hobby, reading, um, taking some quiet moments for reflection. And with this, I really suggest reading your Bible and having a prayer journal or just time of prayer. This has really been a huge part of my like mindset shift and the way that I set the tone for my day. I used to be a mom that would do her Bible time at night when I only had a few littles. I thought this was the better thing since I was more of a night owl, but I noticed I wasn't giving my best and I would be so tired and I was inconsistent. So I switched over to doing mornings and I wake up a little bit earlier than the kids, maybe 20 or 30 minutes or so, so I can just sit in quiet, read my Bible, drink my coffee, and just have time to really reflect, listen to God, and set the tone for the day. And this has been the biggest shift for me as a stay-at-home mama. The second tip that I'm going to suggest is to simplify and organize. And this could be anything from creating a cleaning routine or a laundry routine to going through and maybe purging or decluttering stuff around your house. Just making it easier for you to manage with what you have, whether it's your mental ability, your time ability, your energy, simplifying and making things more organized is going to be able to help you um, just in general as far as being able to maintain the cleanliness or whatever standard you've created in your life. I am somebody who thrives in structure, but mentally my brain does not create structure, it creates chaos. And so I had to create cleaning routines, laundry schedules, those kind of things, because if I wasn't seeing something that was telling me that these are the things that I'm supposed to be doing or these are the things that I'd like to get done, then they were going undone. And then laundry would be super piled up, dishes would be overwhelming, I would walk into a room and I would just be so flustered and overwhelmed with what needs to be done and it was my own doing. It was because I was neglecting doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing or should be doing because out of sight, out of mind. And so creating cleaning schedules and laundry routines, those aren't like really attractive, fun hobbies or anything. Like. I don't know how many people actually enjoy creating these and sticking with them, but I know for me, my brain loves that it is simple. It is in front of me. I know exactly on what day I need to be doing what. I have it all organized in my planner and it really helps me out. So tip number two is going to be simplifying and organizing. Before I get into tip number three, I want to invite you to my free workshop where I'm going to be talking about identifying the problem, taking our thoughts captive, setting our minds on the things that we want to and not believing that lie that we're not enough. If you want to join me, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description that you can sign up. All you need is your name and email, and I'll go ahead and send you some reminders. And for the last and final tip that I'm going to be suggesting is going to be practicing gratitude. Be thankful that you have a washer and a dryer that is able to help you with that work and getting it done. Thankful for the dishwasher that you don't have to sit there and scrub. And if you don't have one, thank you for running water. Thank you for heat. Thank you for these healthy children and their healthy appetites. Thank you, God, for whatever it is, whatever thing that is frustrating you or overwhelming you, be thankful to God for it and the gift that it is. Yes, it is probably overwhelming. But look at all this clean laundry that you have for your little ones, that they don't have to be cold or naked or, you know, have stained clothes, dirty clothes, whatever it is. Thank you for a dirty toilet that shows that my kids have healthy appetites and working digestive systems. Thank you for the food that is in our fridge and our cupboards that I'm able to create meals that my family is enjoying and fills their tummies. Practice gratitude. This is one of the biggest things 
that will really help you be less overwhelmed and less stressed. If you see your work as a gift, as a privilege, as an honor to be able to do, and all of the things that you have around your house that help you. I mean, working toilets, right? We have a working sewer system and water system. There isn't, you know, bowel movements all over the streets. We don't have rats all over the place. We get to sit on a private toilet, do our business, flush it away. And yeah, we have to clean the toilet, but we don't have to deal with all the other gross things, right? And these diapers, healthy bowel movements from our children that create dirty diapers. And we're able to wrap it all up in a disposable little package and ditch it and get rid of it and not have to deal with it. So there's a lot of things that if we're focusing on the gratitude of it and the gift that it is and not so focused on the overwhelming work that has to be done and thinking about, you know, woe is me or dang it, I have to do this thing again or whatever it is. If we look at it as a gift and we're grateful for it, they'll be so much more helpful. I hope you enjoyed these three tips. If you want to learn more, make sure to subscribe and follow me. Don't forget that I'm going to be hosting a live workshop, identifying the problem, talking about taking our thoughts captive, working on mindset, and above all else, not believing the lie that we are not enough. If you are interested in joining, make sure you sign up in the link in the description. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it, share it if you have a mama friend that you want to go ahead and encourage and maybe uplift a little bit, giving her some simple things that she can do to help her in the mindset that she's at. And I will see you guys in the next one. Hope to see you in the live. Bye.